Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyston Grove, and today we're going to show you how to make the Shut the Box board game. Let's get into it. I love that game. We're going to have so much fun. Shut the Box is a dice game that originated as a pub game. I believe it started in Europe. Don't quote me on the Europe part. Eventually, America adopted the game, and of course we turned it into a game show hosted by none other than Alex Trebek. Now Shut the Box is a pretty popular family board game. There are many variations of Shut the Box. Some of the most popular are the solitaire version, the two-player version, and the four-player version. Since the four-player version can be used for both the solitaire and two-player version, that's the version that I'm going to be making. I have a cutoff of mahogany that I have left over from when I made the console table and that's what I decided to use for the frame and the game blocks. I put a rabbit on all four outer frame pieces to create a lip for the bottom panel to sit in. Then I move to the miter saw to miter all the corners. I glued up the frame and clamped it with a strap clamp. I'll leave a link to the strap clamps that I use in the description below. Then I cut a piece of half inch plywood to fit in the frame and glued it and tacked it in place. I set up my crosscut sled on the table saw in order to cut dados in the frame pieces that will create the dividers on the game board. I made sure to mark all the intersections of the dividers so I could keep them in order when I'm taking them apart and putting them back together. Since the dividers need to be higher than the outer frame, I cut an angle on each end of the dividers to taper them down to meet the height of the outer frame. I cut down some more strips of mahogany and set up a stop block on my miter saw at the 2 inch mark and cut 40 game pieces, that'll be 10 for each side of the game board. I drilled an 8th inch hole in each piece and then sanded them on the bench sander. There's no set rule to how many playing blocks you put on your board. Most versions range from 8 to 12 blocks per player with 2 dice. I would suggest not going any lower than 8 blocks because that just makes the game go by really quick. Keep in mind that if you put more than 12 blocks per player, you're going to need more than 2 dice to play. Once I was finished sanding, I could use one of the pieces to mark the dividers where I wanted the pieces to sit, and then drilled holes in all the dividers. I decided it would be a really nice touch to round over all the corners on the outer frame. After sanding and wiping everything down with mineral spirits, it was time to finish assembling the frame. There were a few more things to do before final assembly. 
The game blocks need numbers, so I used a paint pen to hand draw numbers on them. I used some blue painter's tape to give myself a straight line to follow. When you put the numbers on your playing blocks, make sure that the numbers that you put on the opposite side are upside down. That way when you flip the playing blocks up, they appear right side up. I cut some 1 8 inch steel rod to length that will be used to hold the game blocks in place. I picked up this rod at the local Home Depot for just a few bucks. Finally, I applied a few coats of spray on lacquer to the game blocks and the game board. I started the final assembly by inserting a dowel halfway into one of the holes in the frame on each side of the game board. The steel rod gets inserted into the opposite hole followed by a washer, a game piece, another washer, so on and so forth. You must keep going. Once I had all the pieces on the rod, I used another rod to push the rod tight into place. And then I used another piece of dowel to fill that hole. And with just a little touch up, this project is complete. I'm sure that there are many variations and rules to how to play this game, but I'm going to give you a basic breakdown of how you can easily play this game. You start by rolling the dice and adding up the number on the dice that you rolled, and you flip down blocks that coincide with that number. The number of blocks that you flip can be any variation as long as they add up to the exact number that you rolled on the dice. Your turn continues as long as you are able to flip down blocks that add up to the exact amount that you roll. Your turn ends when you are no longer able to flip down blocks that match the exact number that you rolled on the dice. It's a pretty simple game and it goes by pretty quick, but it can be really challenging and a lot of fun with multiple players. Alright, our shot the box game is finished, let's go over a few details real quick. The numbers I added to my game have a really hand-drawn look because they're hand-drawn, but there are plenty of ways that you can apply numbers to these for a more professional look if that's what you would like. Pretty much every version you see of this game is going to have felt in the center and the surrounding areas, including the areas underneath the playing pieces, and that was my original intention, but after adding a couple coats of lacquer, I really like the sheen that added to the plywood, and I like the contrast between the plywood and the mahogany. I'm still considering adding some felt just to the center area to deafen the sound of the dice. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should leave it as is or add the felt. This build may look a little bit more complicated, but it actually really isn't. I was able to complete the whole thing from start to finish in one day. I am working on a full set of plans for this game, and as soon as they're done and posted on the website, I will let you know on the community page. This game is actually a lot of fun and pretty addicting. If you have any ideas of any other unique games that we can make, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, be safe, and have a great day.